So, Hilda has been one of my favorite animated series for a long time. It was the first new cartoon I watched when I entered college, and the wait for season two was two and a half years. And it was still 100% worth it. Everything about Hilda, from the writing, to the animation, to the art direction, to just the vibe the show gives off is immaculate. So today I want to take a look at my favorite episode from season two, The 50 Year Night, and talk about why it's so incredible, and honestly, one of the best episodes of TV that I've ever seen. And of course, the emotional climax of the episode, which is today's one perfect animated scene. What? You're surprised I'm not talking about the deer fox? Today's episode is brought to you by my patrons at patreon.com slash the second dimension. If you'd like to support the channel and see what's in the works early, be sure to check it out. So, here's the context, and since our perfect animated scene is towards the end of this episode, you'll need quite a bit of it. As the 50 year night begins, Hilda has been grounded by her mum for being quite reckless in the previous episode, going on an insane adventure and lying to Joanna about it. We have a, um, Sparrow Scout activity. What activity? This builds on the established, growing conflict between Hilda and her mum this season. I'm not British, but I'm gonna try and keep saying mum. But yeah, they've been going through a lot. Joanna being worried sick about her daughter, who's so rarely home, and Hilda being reckless, not looking to see how her adventures affect those around her. It's something that's been needing to be addressed for a while, and at this episode's start, Hilda is grounded, and she is not happy about it. But, as chance would have it, her boring day is interrupted when she notices her elderly neighbor, Mr. Ostenfeld, mysteriously disappearing and then reappearing after opening a magazine. Determined to investigate, she rushes downstairs to find an order of the magazines delivered to the apartment. She opens one, and boom, she's 50 years in the past. This is gonna go well. We have this, this sort of mid-season event, and so we took a look at like, what's the natural outgrowth of thematically what we were doing there, and that is to think about consequences, and think about the sort of relationship between what you do and then what happens later. And so that's an obvious sort of like starting point where you start to go, okay, well, what kind of stories would really fit there? What kind of thing would really complement that theme nicely? And, you know, you start thinking about time travel, you start thinking about all kinds of things. It's really like a story that dovetails into the idea of the nature of time. Obviously curious after noticing a line of versions of her neighbor entering a local nightclub, she follows them and discovers why they're in the past. To watch this guy. Noticeably reading the same magazine Hilda used to get to the past, he's just enjoying the music and vibing. When a kind woman approaches him, starts making conversation, and asks him to dance. And they go on to have a wonderful night together. Also, this entire scene is done solely with visual storytelling and music, so we don't actually hear any of their dialogue. It's all just expressions and feelings and ah, it's, it's so perfect, but not the one perfect animated scene, but perfect, but good. We're experiencing this thing as in the way that Hilda was experiencing it, sort of hiding up in the, in the rafters, looking down. So you wouldn't necessarily have any of the context of dialogue, but you could rely on the atmosphere and the performances and the blocking and cutting that would communicate to you everything that you needed to know. And it's also more powerful, I think, when you take some of those conventional tools away that you start to realize that, okay, well then I cannot get away with not drilling down on exactly what we need to show here in that whole dance sequence and it almost gives you some perspective in the scene that like we are not with austin feld and tildy like that's a whole thing we're just watching happen and it's, it's a really engaging experience after this though things go downhill fast the austin felds notice hilda chase her back to her apartment building and hilda returns to the present then one austin feld pulls hilda into another room out of nowhere wait did, did i read that right yeah okay Anyways, Mr. Ostenfeld sits down and explains that the young man in the nightclub was him, and he spent years pining over how great that night was, desperately wanting to recapture it, and regretting never talking to that girl again. And these magical magazines have offered him an opportunity to relive that. Each copy only works one time, so he revisits that night over and over, just ordering more magazines when he needs them. However, he doesn't change anything when he goes back, because he knows messing with the past would have consequences. Hilda thinks that the magazines being enchanted is a sign for him to do more though, so she, 
once again, not thinking about the consequences, goes back to tell young Ostenfeld to go and see that girl again, at least get her name, and set up a time for them to meet again. So he does, and everyone watches with anticipation. And it works out. Everyone is proud, especially the Ostenfelds. But now the previous Hilda from her first trip has caught up with her current self. And Hilda says the most self-condemning line in the episode. We came to help Mr. Ostenfeld find love. And we did. With no consequences. And then it goes crazy. A wild, raging time worm appears, as does a Hilda from a timeline loop we've yet to see. Hilda Prime gets eaten alive, and then the Ostenfelds go one by one as they should no longer exist since the timeline has been updated to include his relationship. In the middle of the chaos, as the time worm rips holes through the space-time continuum, we see Peter and the woman he met growing old together, revisiting the nightclub and sharing their life together. It's a beautiful scene and it also establishes an important visual motif, the time worm cutting through the frame in complete brutality as it cleans up time and Mr. Ostenfeld makes a crucial realization. I can't believe that's my life. If only I'd lived it. Hilda then realizes something. The woman Mr. Ostenfeld fell in love with was her current neighbor, the extremely powerful witch known as Tilda. But there's no time to dwell on that, as Hilda and future Hilda fight over what to do, leading for present Hilda to have to watch her future self get eaten alive by the time worm. <laughs> For a moment, it seems like all is okay. Then Hilda watches Mr. Ostenfeld get tossed and devoured by the Time Worm. Man, they do not skimp on the brutality in the show. They were like, oh, look at this, this wholesome, adventurous children's project. Let's give it to someone who loves horror movies. <laughs> it's gonna put so many references in. <laughs> I think that's the best part of it though, is that like, it's, it's a show that's allowed to be a little scary. There's a chase through time as Hilda runs from the Time Worm and rushes to find Tilda for help. But on her way, she sees her mom sitting in her car, pondering over whether her decision to ground Hilda was right or not. But as soon as we're there, the chase has continued as Hilda races for Tilda's house and without hesitating, Tilda stops the Time Worm and invites Hilda in. Now this is the original Tilda who is somehow outside of the change timeline and knows about the fact that there is now an alternate version of herself who got married to Mr. Ostenfeld, also known as Peter, and lived a long, happy life with him. After explaining what the time worm is, basically a worm to clean up time, Tilda mentions that there's a way to stop the time worm from chasing Hilda by destroying the original enchanted artifact, which she has. See, Tilda was the one who enchanted the magazine in the first place in hopes of seeing Peter again after their first meeting. And here's where our scene begins. I wasn't thinking about the consequences back then. Now, Tilda knew the consequences that this would catch up to her with her years of life experience. It was such a reckless, youthful decision and now her alternate self and her neighbor are in mortal danger because of her decision. Destroying the original magazine means ending any timeline caused by its existence. And Hilda can't process this. There's definitive consequences to Tilda's actions. Someone will have to be taken away by the Time Worm here. But as the Time Worm gets closer and closer to breaking free, the Tilda and Ostenfeld who've lived a life together make a choice to sacrifice themselves and accept the consequences while also knowing that the life they shared together is an experience that can never be erased. And I'll let the scene speak for itself from here. And just like that, everything was back to normal. It was like it never happened, but it did. Hilda and Tilde encounter a much happier, more relaxed Peter who hasn't spent his life pining over that one moment, a pained life that was a consequence of Tilda's actions. Hilda reunites with her mom and asks for forgiveness, understanding now more than ever that actions have consequences. And then the episode ends on one of the funniest bits in the entire season. And all things considered, it didn't work out too badly. We saw ourselves die. 
twice. There is more that we didn't experience through that whole business that was going on. The death count could be way higher. Yeah. It, 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 <laughs> you know, you thought we, we topped it off in the second season, but actually, if you think about all the alternate universes and timelines, the death count's way up there. So let's get into what makes this scene perfect. First is, of course, the writing, or how this scene works with the rest of the episode. This scene is the keystone piece of the episode and represents the core of Hilda's journey through this story, learning that actions have consequences. And who better to teach this lesson than Tilde, an old wise witch with a lifetime of experience and one secret from her past that's come back to haunt her. Hilda doesn't break time, Tilde breaks time. Hilda just exacerbates it and makes it so that the time worm notices everything and comes to like, have the consequences. But the real fracture in time happened when Tilde enchanted the magazine. Then it all of a sudden gave us this moment in the climax to say, oh, okay then, now we can give Tildy agency in this story to correct the problem and take responsibility for it as an example for Hilda to show her what happens when you don't think about the consequences, when you just do stuff. And it's this great moment where Hilda's feeling all these feelings of, of regret and remorse for what she's done and that Tildy eases her and relieves her of it by revealing to her that it's not you, it's me. Like Tildy is so old that she's over everything. That she, you know, she's seen it all. She's had this crazy awesome life. So it's kind of all old hat to her. So she doesn't really care about the drama. So when you give her that sort of like wry perspective, it gives her character like a dimension that I feel allowed us to, to give her some meat. Obviously she has a lot of experience. She's very wise, very old, but she's not decrepit and boring. <laughs> Tilda and Peter sacrificing themselves to save Hilda represents the ultimate consequence, an ending of two lives to save two others. That sort of wisdom and, and understanding from Austin Feld and Tilde when faced with sort of the end of their love is that, no, it happened for us. And that no matter what happens, it can be completely erased. It still happened and it's still real. And I think it's just sort of a wonderful way to explore coming to the end of, of something. In the restored timeline, Peter seems to be much happier. And all of that is captured in this scene, finally giving Hilda the perspective to reconcile with her mom. The second thing is the music. Hilda's musical score is always incredible. And you have Ryan Carlson to thank for that in season two and most of season one. The music in this scene highlights Tilda and Peter's sacrifice brilliantly and gives the entire scene a sense of weight and despair, but also hope and acceptance of the life Peter and Tilly lived together being real. It truly is incredible, so just listen to a bit of it. We know, but not like this. I'm glad we shared a life together, even if it's to be erased. We lived it. That can't be erased. That's what matters. The third thing that makes this scene perfect is the boarding. Gosh, every expression is so beautifully captured, from the despair on Hilda's face as she processes what's about to happen, to Tilda protecting Hilda from the time worm, to Peter and Tilda hugging, completely accepting of both their life and their death as the worm mercilessly removes them from existence. This scene has so much power, so much weight, and that's all brought out through how the storyboards are translated. A lot of times on Hilda, what we do is is emphasize the character's experience of something and not necessarily show an objective point of view that the audience could have. What's more important is how does the character process what they're seeing? That's what's important. That's what makes it either brutal, like, like that moment, or, or beautiful, like the moment when the time worm is opening all those holes and you can see the mirages through the time portals that if you removed the point of view from the narrative of Hilda and Austenfeld Prime experiencing those moments and sort of the melancholy and, and sadness that goes along with it, that you wouldn't have the emotional weight of it. And so visually, when you're blocking it, you've got to emphasize those things. That's what you're trying to convey to the audience, to linger on the things that matter, which are Tilly and Austenfeld embracing the swift brutalness of the time worm entering and exiting frame with, with absolutely no 
it's just a force of nature again it's like a it's a thing that just happens it wipes by and it takes them out and it's it's fast and merciless and then going straight on to hilda's face so what can we take away from this as creatives looking to work on our own projects? Well, the number one thing is to find creative ways to tie your concepts together. As a resolution to Hilda being grounded, there are a number of ways this adventure could have gone. But instead of something focusing on the show's core cast, the episode takes a step back and gives us a love story, rather unexplored territory for Hilda, between two characters who we've barely gotten to know so far. We wanted to just really play with the idea of doing a romance because that's like something that we don't really get to touch on too much in the show just because like the the style and, and and subject matter that we're dealing with just never feels like it really fits things so so we knew like okay we want to make a romance and then also like a sci-fi bonkers adventure because i think that's such a wonderful contrast in in terms of like the tone of the episode where you have these very soft tender parts of the episode that are that are really paced out and deliberate and then you have these manic high energy intense moments like the emergence of the time worm and the chase through time and all these kinds of things and you sort of can can create such like a wonderful experience by pairing those contrasts together in doing this we get an awesome character study not only of hilda but of two characters in the world that we get to know better Tilde and Peter, and how we see them after this episode will never really be the same. So find ways to thematically tie unexpected characters and ideas together. You'd never know what you'll find. And I think that was sort of the big thing we were trying to explore with Hilda is like at the end of the episode, having her be able to move forward from this moment of being in trouble with her mom to see sort of the context of what was happening and to not let it make her more angry and more bitter about the situation. Using Austin Feld and, uh, and Tildy's story as sort of the backdrop for Hilda to, to learn and process those things was just a really fun, fun exercise. The second thing is to use those visual callbacks. Calling back to the Time Worm's destruction from earlier in the episode makes this shot even more devastating, as we've seen the Time Worm take Mr. Ostenfeld exactly like this before. It's an unstoppable force, and the callback allows us to focus on the tragedy of the loss of this entire shared life as they hug and accept it, rather than the nature of the worm itself. It's just about the character's experience in the scene, and that's sort of the signature that I try to put on the show, is managing the narrative point of view in a way that reinforces the audience's experience so they can relate with, with what the characters are feeling and thinking. The third thing is to not be afraid to slow down and explain things to the audience. Tilda being ultimately responsible for everything is unexpected and quite the twist given that it's revealed at the end of the episode. And Tilda isn't a character we often see in the show. Fully explaining the stakes is much better than rushing through an emotional moment and we get the chance to see how each of the four characters in this scene processes the same revelation. Disbelief and horror, regret, and acceptance. And it's all just a simple conversation. There's a lot of ideas, there's a lot of things we can explore, there's a lot of different things we can do like in, in any episode, but having that core theme always running through, always informing what decisions we make from every aspect of the show. Every single choice in every department, you want it to come from that, like, are we supporting that that core theme, whether it be like a mood, music, color, animation, timing, acting, all that stuff. In doing that, we are going to come across stories, themes, and certain aspects that, yeah, people aren't going to, like, it's going to be heavy, or it's going to be a bummer, or it's going to be scary, or it's not going to be satisfying because it doesn't scratch that, like, theory itch, you know? But that is why Hilda resonates with people, I think, is because at the end of the day, it is just about telling a sincere story with a core theme that we can explore and put like our human experience and emotion in because we can relate to those themes as people. Like I can't relate to a time travel chase, you know, but I can relate to reminiscing on a moment in my life where I felt something and wanting to relive it. We all have to believe in the show and, and what we're doing with it and know that that is our goal. We're not just killing time, like making product, that we're creating something that we all believe in and care about.
So there you have it, another perfect animated scene in our collection. Thank you so much to Andy and Megan for coming on the show to talk all about the episode. If you want to check out our full conversation, including why there's so much death in season two, the link is in the corner. And of course, I want to hear from you, Dimension Hoppers. What's your favorite scene in Hilda? And are you ready for the movie? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you back in Dimension One. All right, so if you've been following me with the production of this video, it has taken a while. I apologize for the delay, couldn't be helped. I needed extra time to get those unique storyboards from Silvergate Media, so shout out to Silvergate. Thank you for letting me use them in the video. I really think they made it a lot better. But I've been wanting to talk about Hilda since I saw season two last December. And you know, I'm, I'm glad I finally got to it and I did it before the Hilda movie. So I'm not, I'm not behind. I do want to cover the Hilda movie when it comes out. So definitely be on the lookout for that. I have plenty of new videos in the works. So stay tuned for those from Why Milo Murphy's Law Ended to Amphibia Reanimated, which is planned for release in December. Thank you so much for watching. And if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe and have a great rest of your day, afternoon, evening, or night.